Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ballet Rain. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, then you will know that summer is now in full swing. Yay! And if you are here in merry old Texas, can I get a yeehaw? Yeehaw. <laughs> It has become quite the inferno. And seeing that it is now midsummer, we thought what better time to give you a ballet appreciation video on the Panada from Frederick Ashton's A Midsummer Night's Dream. If you watched our 5K Q&A video, linked above and below, then you will know that Midsummer Night's Dream, specifically Frederick Ashton's version of Midsummer Night's Dream, is actually Jordan's dream role, which is coincidental because it's the dream role and it's literally the dream Role. But anyway, Jordan's always wanted to dance, specifically Queen Titania mm -hmm. from The Dream. Yeah. So this is kind of a very, very special piece of rep. I know every time we introduce a piece of rep, we're always like, this is very special to us. <laughs> a lot of pieces are really special to us, okay? And don't come for us. Yeah. It is a very special pas de deux, and you guys have heard us talk about Frederick Ashton numerous times already, but this one is particularly exquisite in my mind. The different passages that he uses and the very unique lifts that he put in this pas de deux are very unusual to most other classical ballet rep. Yeah, we're really excited to share it with you guys today because you all seem to really like our commentary on Eden's favorite role. If you haven't seen it, it's up there in the card and also down in the description. So uh, we're excited to bring you my favorite dream role. And um, I think it says a lot about our personality. <laughs> I mean, a little bit, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> if you guys are ready to fangirl with us, hit the <laughs> like button and we will go. You might have already known this, or at least supposed this, but this ballet is based off of the very famous play of the same name by William Shakespeare. And the beautiful, enchanting music is by the wonderful Felix Mendelssohn, arranged in this production by John Lankberry. The pas de we're talking about today appears towards the end of this one-act ballet, and it is a pas de between Oberon, he's like the king, the king of, of the fairies, fairies right? yeah. and then Queen Titania. Tatiana. <laughs> Titania. Or Tatiana, however people <laughs> prefer to pronounce it. They, pretty much for the entire ballet, they had an argument and yeah. so they're not really speaking to each other. Right. This parada takes place just after they make up together. Mm -hmm. They've already, you know, resolved everything. I'm sorry, I forgive you, let's move on. And then we have a parada. Because that's clearly how you good. make up <laughs> an argument. <laughs> The beautiful dancers that we are very lucky to be able to watch today are from American Ballet Theatre. King Oberon will be danced by Ethan Stiefel, and Queen Titania will be danced by Alessandra Ferry. Not funny, her name is Ferry and she is the very queen. She's a very beautiful dancer. Very good technique. <laughs> <laughs> Here's King Oberon. Oh my goodness. Wow. This dancer in particular has so much control. He's mm. really mastered it. Yeah. He's looking for Titania right now. He has no idea where she is. So he's just searching the woodland glade for her. And she goes, it's me. And he goes, oh, that's where you are. Oh, this step is so beautiful. This was meant to be, you know, an illusion of floating, mm -hmm. flying. You know, that effortless, breezy look. I feel like this is the reason point shoes were invented for this step here. Absolutely. Point shoes were there so you can look like you're floating just like that. Mm-hmm. First step, official step. This is very, very difficult for both the ballerina and also for the danseur because he takes her back into this uh -huh. lunge backwards and she's completely off her leg, mm -hmm. completely off her leg intentionally. Mm -hmm. So he's literally holding her up, yeah. helping her not to hit the ground. Yeah. And from this really off balance position, she has to do that, develop it into panche right away. Yes, into the panche arabesque. In a very precarious position. Very, very difficult. Your legs do not want to go up when you're so far back on your leg. Yeah. It takes a lot, a lot of flexibility and strength together and mm -hmm. also just trusting your partner. Yeah. But he did a really, really good job with this, um, making her feel you know, secure. Yeah, making sure that she goes mm -hmm. from off her leg to on her leg while her position yes. is changing. There's a lot going on. It's a very, very difficult transition. But it looks so beautiful. And I like that arm he does because it brings some attention back to him. Mm -hmm. 
because a lot of times we're so focused on the ballerina and that is the purpose. A good dancer will know how to make the ballerina shine, but I love it when the choreographer purposely allows the danseur to have a little bit of a spotlight moment. Their demeanor is also really special and the way they approach these steps is amazing um, because they have to, a very complex character because they are royalty. Mm -hmm. So it has that weight of, you know, like a royal character, but then also they're fairy, so it has to have that light and really bright side to yeah. it. So then mixing those two, which are almost opposites, but they are also kind of cohesive in a way, yeah. but to mix them together so beautifully and to carry that balance throughout the whole piece, as you'll see, it's really, really immaculate. Oh, I love watching her roll down on her shoes. Yeah, she has really good control. This is a very difficult turn, and you have to make it look effortless, as if there's no such thing as being off balance because you're a fairy. It's really easy to look like you're like pushing on your partner to get that oh, momentum yeah. for the turn. Uh huh. She did a really good job of just. It looks like the breeze just blew just her, blew her, and her she around. Just turned. Yeah. That's really special. That's a hard thing to master. And that comes from being able to hold yourself up. You have to have a lot of supporting leg strength and a lot of core strength in order to hold yourself and controlling that momentum and that speed in a very careful, calibrated way. A lot of it is on the ballerina because they only have that small contact point, mm -hmm. one hand. So yeah, that's a very difficult step. I think the whole parada is unusually difficult for a classical ballet rep, and it's probably because when it's done right, it makes it that much more magical because it looks virtually impossible, but yet they're doing it. Yeah, the like, supernatural The effect. supernatural effect. Yeah. Here comes the balance. Boom. Absolutely solid. Didn't even waver. You guys know that's not easy. I also love this part of it because it has a lot of solo bits in it and it kind of just shows the different sides of the characters when they're not together, you know? It shows yeah. their personality a little bit more. I will say though that King Oberon has some of the most challenging male choreography yes. I've seen. Or most interesting, I suppose. Yes, the most nuanced. Which begets challenging, because when something's unusual, it's challenging because you don't get an opportunity to practice those kinds of things. Right. So he has some really interesting, very unique choreography. For sure. Maybe we should do a, a commentary on yes. the solo that he does. Yes. That was absolutely so crazy amazing. hard. Let us know if you guys want to see more of the dream. I love the way they capitalize on the music. The choreography is just brilliant. It is brilliant. up on his axis. Ending in Susu! In Susu. That is really hard because you turn in the high position and ordinarily you would finish in a low position to kind of ground yourself. Yeah. But this one, because he's a fairy, he can't come down right. Yeah. So he has to finish up. So you go plie, you go to pirouette up and yeah. you stay up to finish. You have to stop your momentum. Yeah. Because our fourth position will help you stop turning. Right. Yeah. Like a kickstand yeah. almost. You, you like can stop yourself there. Yeah. But Susu, there's very little traction. Yeah. So if you're out of control with your turn and you close to Susu, you're just going to keep turning and you'll fall out of it. You have to control your momentum. Stop the momentum when you're up here. Yes. On one so foot on demi point, yeah. and then just like <laughs> close. Ah! He did it so beautifully too, and especially with this whole thing, because yeah. that wants to throw your balance backwards yeah. too. Yeah. So a beautiful demonstration of control and core strength here. Yeah. Amazing. I'm telling you, it's a very challenging choreography for the dancer here. Yes. Perfection. We have some fun fairy arms. It's almost more contemporary, not contemporary, because this is a classical ballet, but it's not your typical classical yeah. port de bras. A lot of wrist flicking, yeah. which I guess <laughs> you don't really do a lot in ballet. We will turn the wrist, but it's not so... Yeah, so... Not like a gymnast. We, we love gymnasts, but we can't have 
this in ballet. Yeah. yeah. Unless you're doing roles like this when it's a very characterized role and then it's, you know, it's acceptable because yeah. it looks like she's just throwing fairy dust around. Yeah. Know? It's very cute, very fun. There is a lot of wrist. Lots of wrist. Very flowy. Yes. And not so much structured, very free. This is also a very long pas de deux. Yes. <laughs> especially for the amount of jumps that there are in it. It's very tiring. I love these parts where they dance in synchrony. Look at my foot. <laughs> Here's my foot. This is a very interesting line as well, and I love this because if you pause it there, you can draw a circle, a half Ooh. circle there, which yeah. is, I think Ashton in particular is well known for these beautiful shapes and positions, mm -hmm. not just with one person, but with multiple people, especially partnerships. But this is very different because uh, they're back to back. Normally he is facing her and she's facing the audience, so they're both facing the same way, mm -hmm. but now he's facing the opposite way which is very different. Yeah, he has to hold her on balance behind his back. Isn't that interesting? It helps that he's much taller than her. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine doing this with a shorter partner? <laughs> it might be a bit difficult. I imagine it would really help when he pulls this top arm up. When he keeps the tension on this arm here, yeah. it'll help everything to stay more on balance, which right. is helpful if you are a taller partner. Yes. That's why generally when we're doing partnering, we always try to pair the ballerina with a dasseur that's a little considerably taller, taller than yeah. her, even when she's on point. So that things like this is just a bit easier. In this position coming up, this double arabesque, that they're both doing an arabesque. And panche. This is really, really hard, especially for the for the dancer. He has to keep himself on balance. Yeah. And keep her on balance. Yeah. <laughs> he has to be very, very solid and very conscious of where her weight is. And she has to really hold herself, uh -huh. try and keep herself on balance as best as she can. For this sure. is definitely um, a collaboration to make this picture happen, but uh -huh. it's breathtaking, the mirror image uh -huh. of it. And it had like a diamond in the middle of their arms make. Yeah. Lovely. Love oh, this step oh, here. Oh, that's so pretty. It's again youthful, like you're doing London Bridge or something, or whatever you do when you're a kid. You know, you do those yeah. little dances where you like, like go underneath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of that yeah. again. The fairy vibe, the very youthful, eternal, like never going to age. That sort of vibe. It just brings that youthful energy yeah. back in. Yeah, it is difficult to be that constrained. I feel like mm -hmm. holding both hands and not letting go, and you're turning and twisting and doing all this stuff. You and your partner have to be very in sync. If one goes even a smidgen before the other. It it's gonna have this way feel. off. Yeah. yeah. This is again, I, I'll never let up on musicality. This is why musicality is important. <laughs> <laughs> the more you are in tune with the music, then both you and your partner can follow the music. You can guarantee that you'll be on the time. Right. I love this sequence. A little fairy flight. Those lists you'll never see anywhere else. Yeah. Those are so unique. That's really beautiful. I love this <gasps> lift. That was... Oh, and those transitions are so sweet. How she goes over his shoulder like that. Mm -hmm. Having done some of those lifts before, maybe not that one specifically, but having done something like that, it's so delicate, dangerous balance yeah. of being precise and accurate and careful and also just letting loose. Because <laughs> you've got to jump your very highest. Uh -huh. You've got to essentially long jump, yeah. only head first. <laughs> Um, but you also can't disregard your position right and you can't disregard your trajectory Yeah, you can't right. go too far out otherwise he'll miss you and you can't go too far close to him Otherwise, you'll just hit him yeah. <laughs> You have to aim right for where he's gonna catch you. right, but you have to be careful not to overthink Otherwise, yeah. sometimes you'll hold yourself back. Yeah, exactly. from actually going to it and then it just doesn't even happen So yeah, very careful balance of being careful and just being daring and yeah. going into it Also, usually your partner will do everything in his power to make sure you don't hit the floor. So yes. That helps too. It was just
just so seamless. I love seeing this position was so sharp. It was like, whoop, and then it just melts. Yeah. So beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love this lift. The angel lift. It's my very favorite lift. Yeah, it's definitely one of the most beautiful. This is sweet. Here's that sort of regalness coming back. Uh huh. Those so sisons really make it look effortless and still like sort of that sprightly nature. And then it melts. Oh, so beautiful. The choreography is just genius. Beautiful dynamics. This is very oh, tiring. Oh, wow. Imagine for the dancer after, you know, how long has it been so far? Five minutes? Yeah. Five minutes of serious jumping and serious lifting. The last thing you want to do is squat. Yeah. With, and, and carrying her with one arm. Pretty much her whole weight. Yeah, absolutely her whole She's weight. She's literally hanging on him right now because, mm -hmm. I mean, you can push a little bit out of the split. For sure. But, but not much. When, when your legs are in that position, you can't really, there's not much you can do. He has a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. It's hard on the back, hard on the legs, everything. Yeah. And at the end of the parada, when they're already tired. <laughs> and, and to make it look so smooth and yeah. effortless and easy, you know, that's really something. Exquisite. I think I would rank that as exquisite. That's top totally of the tier list. Exquisite. So that was the dream. I think this pottery was a very suitable way to kind of wrap the valley up and mm -hmm. kind of, you know, just bring harmony back into the sort of conflict that there was in the beginning of yeah. the valley. I think all together is just so touching and so beautiful. If you have an opportunity to watch this version, I say go for it. Yes. This, it's quite quite a masterpiece. And I mean Mendelssohn, like how can you not? Make sure you comment below if you wanted to do a full analysis on the entire Midsummer Night's Dream ballet. I think that would be super fun to do. We would love to break it down for y'all. We should definitely do that. So comment below if you're interested. Make sure you like this video for the beautiful dancers we got to see, Ethan Stiefel and Alessandra Ferry. If you really like this video, feel free to share it with someone special in your life. And I think that's all from us for now. This is Ballet Rain signing off. Until the next video. Bye. So if you watched our 5K Q&A. Sorry. <laughs> Did I scare you? It's so hot in here. It is pretty hot. Oh, Welcome it's so hot. Unusual to the U2. Unusual to the usual. <laughs> the very eloquent writer, everybody. <laughs> It's really hot in here. It is hot. I should not have worn a half sleeve. No, oh. but we need to look like fairies because it's Midsummer Night's Dream. Quite right. Quite Let right. us be beautiful or die. Actually, in this weather, I think we can achieve both.